Tomorrow afternoon, the Birmingham Stallions will begin their postseason run when they host the Michigan Panthers in the USFL Conference Championship game. Joining me now to preview the matchup is the host of State of the Stallions, Luke Miller. Good morning, Luke. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Wonderful, buddy. We appreciate your time. You know, last time you were on, we speculated about how much game plan we'd see from these two teams in their second regular season matchup, but the finale was a thriller. 20-19, to the Stallions take it to finish 9-1. and What were your takeaways from the game? You know, I, I do think both teams kind of kept things pretty vanilla, but you both you could tell both wanted to win. I mean, they didn't go out there and just lay down. It was a hard-fought game by both sides till the end. It was a very close affair. You know, the Steins were fortunate to pull it out uh, at the end there with a missed field goal by Michigan. But, uh, you know, there was some, some t intensity and uh, some chippiness, and that will certainly carry over, I think, into this weekend's matchup. Head coach Skip Holt said after the matchup, he didn't make two different game plans, just one large one, referring to Week 10 and then the conference championship game. I'd imagine he's still got some cards up his sleeve for this week, but what do you think the Stallions need to focus on to advance to the UFL championship game? Yeah, you know, I think the big thing is uh, getting back into an offensive rhythm. Um, they've been known for kind of a high-flying offense the past couple of years and for the majority of this season. But the last two weeks, they've had some of their biggest offensive struggles. They only scored nine points two weeks ago, which is the least they've ever scored since coming back in 2022. And then this past week, they only put up 20, which is a decent number, but but certainly it was it was a very kind of start and stop affair. They didn't seem like they were in sync. They they had a couple good drives, but a couple really kind of rough drives. Gave up five sacks, which is kind of an unusual number. So I would love to see them get into a sort of a balanced, kind of consistent offensive rhythm throughout that game. I think that's going to be really important against a very good Michigan defense. So easier said than done. Well, I want to stay with that for just a second because – do you think that the struggles Birmingham has had are on their side, or is that just teams getting a full set of tape on Adrian Martinez in this offense? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. I think two weeks ago, San Antonio has one of, if not the best defenses in the league, so I think they deserve a lot of credit for the game plan. They had to stop the Stallions. Um, last week, I do think the Stallions tried to keep things a little vanilla, and the one thing that I, I noticed and some others noticed was that Adrian Martinez really didn't try to do a lot with his legs. I think – you know, they didn't want him to risk getting hurt, you know, taking off on a scramble and, you know, something unfortunate happening and them losing him for the postseason. So it, it seemed like he gave himself up a little bit quicker. So I think this week with things being a little more wide open, with him being a little bit maybe quicker to take off and run when he's under pressure, I think that could kind of open the offense back up. Um, but certainly, you know, they again, like I said, they're going against a good defense, a great defensive coach and Mike Nolan. So, you know, they'll they'll do some things to try and contain Adrian, of course. But I, I think, like you said, Skip will throw everything he's got, obviously, in, in hopes of keeping the season alive. This week, Birmingham made a number of roster moves ahead of the playoff matchup. And you may know Alabama fans are going to see a familiar face at Protective Field this weekend. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, at former Alabama offensive lineman Deontay Brown, who's actually an Alabama native from North Alabama, he will be back. He started at guard for the Stallions in week one and unfortunately suffered an injury that's kept him out for about 10 weeks. But he is healthy now and he is back and he is active for this game. So, uh, so yeah, certainly if you make your way out to Protective Stadium, you'll get to see him, an Alabama native, play his first football game in Alabama since college. He spent some time in the NFL with the Panthers and uh, it's kind of bounced around, but uh, looking to get back to the NFL and, and kind of put some more tape out there with the Steins this weekend. I mean this in the best way, Luke. We have seen some antics in the stands at UFL games throughout the season. The Stallions certainly have some passionate fans. What do you expect the atmosphere to be like tomorrow afternoon? You know, I think it's going to be really great. I think there was a lot of hype for the, the, time, the time a couple weeks ago when the Steins played A.J. McCarron in the St. Louis Battlehawks. I think this game will have a similar atmosphere. I think obviously a lot of people will be coming out for the playoff game. Um, you know, since that Battlehawks game, the uh, the shirtless end zone section has really taken off. So I expect that to be, uh, you know, really, really, uh, you know, exciting. <laughs> see see what comes, what happens with that. And you know, we've got people like uh, Cole Kublik is going to be on the sideline. I know he's been you know, kind of promoting the game, telling people to come out and pack protective. And I uh, saw yesterday Roll Tide Willie. If you're an Alabama fan, you probably know who that is. He's He was promoting the game. He was actually at Protective Stadium letting people know they need to come out and support the stallion. So I think it'll be really fun. And a lot of a lot of kind of local, local famous people for us will be there, and it should be a great atmosphere. 
All right, Luke, so it's time. We've done everything but get your official prediction. I, I assume you're going with the Stallions, but I, I need a score from you. Yeah, you know, I am going to go with the Stallions. You know, I know people say it's hard to beat a team three times in one year, and that's, I think, very true. But the Stallions have had to do it twice the last two years to get to the championship, and they're going to have to do it again. I think they can do it. I, the main reason being I just – I think both teams have great defenses, but I just trust the Stallions offense to produce a lot more than I do Michigan's based on what I've seen this year. Um, I think the Stallions offense gets back into a better rhythm. I don't think they score a ton of points because both times they played Michigan, they've only been able to put up 20. But – um, I'm going to give them a little bit more firepower this week. So I'll, I'll say they score maybe uh, 24, and I think they're able to hold Michigan to about 18. I think it's you know maybe a one-score game, but I think the Stallions come out on top. Luke, we appreciate your time. And, folks, I, wanna, I want you to see that picturesque setting behind Luke there this morning. You want to know how dedicated this man is to covering the Birmingham Stallions? He's at a bachelor party weekend this weekend at a, an undisclosed location on this show. He woke up very early to be on this program, to give you the latest on the stands. And, Luke, I just want to tell you, we appreciate your time this morning. Go out uh, Birmingham, see the Stallions. They're one step away from the UFL championship game, and they're playing some fantastic football. He is the host of State of the Stallions. You can check it out on YouTube, social media. Does all kind of pre-post game posting as well. You don't want to miss that. Luke Miller, thank you for your time this morning. Yeah, no, thank you all.